Most stars like the Sun are born in uh, molecular clouds that also create high mass stars. And these high mass stars are very important because they affect their surroundings uh, by emitting large amounts of ultraviolet radiation. This radiation goes in it, out into the molecular cloud and actually evaporates and disperses the cloud and creates these spectacular kind of structures like walls and pillars and so forth. And you may have seen these types of pillars before with images with the Hubble Space Telescope, the so-called uh, pillars of creation. One of the problems with analyzing those types of images though is that you tend not to see these interfaces very well because of large amounts of dust that are in these regions. But if you look in the near infrared at just the right wavelength, which is the wavelength of a particular line of molecular hydrogen, you can actually see through the dust to these areas where the ultraviolet radiation is dispersing and evaporating the cloud. There's a particularly good example of this in the southern hemisphere, which is the Carina molecular cloud, which is something like 10 times bigger than what you may have seen in the Pillars of Creation images. And so what we've done with these images is we've imaged this entire region, which is much larger than one could do from the Hubble Space Telescope, and we've looked at it in the infrared so that we can see all these different structures. When we do this, we see a, a wide variety of things, from structured walls, through fat pillars, through these kind of skinny pillars, then, and then also they get detached from the molecular cloud. So you can actually see how the ultraviolet radiation is sculpting these types of, of structures from uh, the overall molecular cloud. And we think that the sun probably formed in, in region like this, which was affected by the surrounding uh, massive stars. By that I mean the ones which are more than about 20 solar masses. Those types of stars, they don't live very long, but those are the ones that blow up into big supernovae and, and have large effects on the overall uh, galaxy. In fact, in this particular cluster, Eta Carina, uh, which is a very famous massive star, might be the next supernova that will go off in our galaxy. So by looking at all these different types of structures, we're much, getting a much better idea as to the types of conditions that happen when our own star formed, and we can really look in at the interfaces which give us an idea as to the physics about what's going on.